date with the angel. Starring Betty White. Bill Williams as Gus Angel. Presented by the Plymouth Dealers of America, who proudly sell and service the beautiful new Plymouth for 1957. The time, about seven months after Vicky and Gus Angel were married. The characters, two chicks and a wheel. The plot, two's company, threes for the birds. No, not on your life. Tell your sister to keep him in Mississippi. They're used to him down there. We're not. Well, at least listen to what she said. Honey, the last time he was here, he smashed all the furniture in the house. He's only 16. Sweetheart, they want to send Wheeler out here because they're very worried about him. If he were my son, I'd be a little bit worried, too. What's he done? Create a milk shortage in Mississippi? <laughs> He's in love. What with? Another giraffe? <laughs> Grace says it's serious. Listen to this. The girl's name is Laurie Olson. She's a rather sweet and somewhat wearing young thing, and Wheeler wants to marry her and raise pigs. <laughs> <laughs> On a farm. And besides, they're way too young to oh, get... Oh, now, wait a minute. Wheeler's not even dry behind the ears, and he's talking about marriage? You write that sister of yours and tell her to stop talking and do something with that boy. After all, marriage is important. Marriage is for life. Gosh, honey, look how long I looked before I found you. And even then, I got lucky. What else did she say? It's just more of the same. The main thing is they want to get him away from this Lori, whoever she is, old time. Honey, the last time he... You know I like him. It's only that... All right, what's a little smashed furniture? Write your sister and tell her to send him out. Vicky. No. Yeah. When? We pick him up at the depot tomorrow. <laughs> Place look familiar to your wheel? Get it this time. Well, I can handle it. Will you let me have it? <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you could use a little refreshment after that long trip, huh? How about a couple of gallons of milk? Oh, please don't wait on me, Uncle Gus. I remember where the icebox is. <laughs> well, he's picking up right where he left off. But, you know, he doesn't seem too upset about leaving his girl. You know, I noticed that too. I expect a tragedy to come dragging off that train. <laughs> Instead of that, we... I'll clean it up, Aunt Vicky. I thought I was watching. Oh, that voice. <laughs> All right, honey. I don't know what Grace was so upset about. Yes, and you and Wilma lined up this new girl for him. <laughs> We're just going to take him to lunch. We can at least go through with that. Yeah, I'm sorry about the broken glass. I picked up all the pieces, though. Well, that was thoughtful of you. I put him in that disposer thing in the sink. That's what it's for, ain't it? <laughs> Mashed potatoes have been known to stop it. Isn't it? Isn't what? That's what it's for, isn't it? Ain't that what I said? <laughs> How are your mother and dad? Shook up. They hate me. <laughs> hate you? Yeah, but I don't mind. It's just the stage they're going through. <laughs> They sent you out here so you could have a nice vacation. That doesn't sound like they hate you. They sent me out here to keep me away from Lori Olson. Uh, who's Lori Olson? The girl Mom wrote you about in the letter. Do you remember Grace saying anything about a girl? What letter? Oh, I know Mom wrote you a letter telling all about me because I helped her spell incorrigible. <laughs> well, anyway, we're very proud of you, Wheeler. We think you're being very sensible about leaving, Lori. Well, it isn't too bad. She'll be out here tomorrow the next day. Here? What? 
Yeah, her and her folks are driving out here for their vacation. You think maybe I should have told my folks to? <laughs> What can I do for you? Oh, uh, you got a spare wheel lying around? <laughs> oh, I'm Lori Olson. So soon? Huh? Uh, what I meant by that was, uh, we just heard about you last night. You must be his Uncle Gus. Only by marriage. <laughs> Come in. Oh, thanks. Uh, oh, I can't stay. Uh, uh, Daddy's, uh... Waiting outside in the car. We'll have him come in for goodness. Oh, no. He's got to go pick up Mom. See, they're uh, kind of on a vacation. Uh -huh. From Wheeler? You dig. <laughs> I just wanted to tell the wheel that our date's on for tonight. Well, he's not here just now. Oh, panic. He promised to take me out the first night I got here. Well, his Aunt uh, Vicky is having to meet a... Uh, he and his Aunt Vicky are having lunch downtown somewhere. Well, hey, let's go down. Well, I don't know exactly where they're eating. Why don't you come back tonight? Nervous. Yeah. Oh, but don't tell him I was here, Uncle Gus. We'll surprise him, huh? Dread <laughs> Well, that's all right. Sorry. <laughs> you and Wheeler go to the same gym? <laughs> He's just a final charge, isn't he? Real nervous. <laughs> Well, you come back tonight. I know he'll be happy about having his date with you. Boy, me too. <laughs> We've been apart for five days. Wow. See you around, Uncle Gus. Like you, good manners are okay, but with them dumb girls, it's just a waste of time. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Those dumb girls. <laughs> and yet, you asked Lori to marry you. Oh, I don't need good manners to Lori. She thinks I have sort of a loose charm, like a young Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> you do that once more, and I'll see to it that you're a loose Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you could do it, too. Would you like to order now? We're waiting for someone, thank you. <laughs> oh, what does this girl look like that you want me to get interested in? I might have known you'd figure it out. <laughs> Wheeler, how can a 16-year-old boy, still in high school, how can you even dream of getting married? Beats algebra. <laughs> Chair first wheel. Ooh. I'm sorry. Wilma, this is my nephew Wheeler. This is Mrs. Clemson Wheel. Hello, Hi. Wheeler. Uh, Jane will be right in. She just got her driver's license, so she insisted on parking the car. Oh, <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> brought up in a downdraft. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's this friend of yours like, Miss Clemson? Well, to my mind, she's pretty, Wheeler. Vicki, I hope this works out all right. She's done a little 
acting on television lately, and she's changed quite a bit since the last time I saw her. Well, if you don't mind, I'll treat her kind of light. I'm going steady. <laughs> we know, Will, but for my sake, will you please don't brush her off completely? Okay. The only reason I got her to come at all is that she wanted to see what a boy from Mississippi looks like. Well, Wheeler's promised to spend the afternoon with her. <laughs> oh, here she is now. Jane, I want you to meet my dearest friend, Vicki Angel. Hello, Jane. How do you do? And uh, this is her nephew, Wheeler. Wheeler, this is Jane Wells. Uh, how do you do, Miss Wells? How do you do? Thank you. Um, shall we order? <laughs> Coming here tonight, we've got to get Wheeler out of the house before she shows up. Why not let Laurie in this new one of his tangle? Might be fun to watch. <laughs> Gus, am I doing right to maneuver things like this? Of course you are. Your sister deliberately sent him out here for a reason. And besides, I've seen this, Laurie. She's just as young and clumsy and uncoordinated as he is. Your sister is perfectly right. What is this Jane Wells like? Quite sophisticated and quite Hollywood. Today she took Wheeler through a television station. Well, that's one station won't be on the air tonight. <laughs> tonight she's picking him up and they're going to attend a movie premiere, no less. Gus... Be prepared for a surprise. She seems to have had an unusual influence on him. What do you mean by that? Well, you were out and back when he came home this afternoon, so you did... Am I disturbing anyone? <laughs> of course not, Will. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you got a sore throat? <laughs> Wheeler, explain that to me, darling. This is his regular voice. He just never had much occasion to use it. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, Jane seems to be a little late, so I thought I'd take advantage of the time to join you in some light conversation and light bandage. <laughs> badinage. How about some milk? I said badinage. Of course you did. Milk? Uh, I'd prefer coffee. Black. <laughs> sure, Will. Have a seat. Thank you. So it's a premiere tonight, huh? Indeed, yes. <laughs> this Jane Wells must be quite a dish. Uh, isn't that a little vulgar, Uncle Gus? <laughs> now, wait a minute, you... <laughs> I'll let her in if you think I can handle the situation. Hey, Vicky, will you do me a favor? Your voice is slipping. Why, well, no, but I'm in a hurry. Uh, would you mind if I dropped the aunt and uncle in front of Jane? It sounds kind of babyish. Well, I don't know about Gus, but... Oh, sure, go ahead. Okay. After you, Vicky. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Good evening, Mrs. Angel. Uh, sit down, Jane. Thank you. I've already introduced myself, Willa. Fine, fine, Gus. <laughs> you know, I meant to tell you before, Mrs. Angel, how very much you remind me of Sophia. Sophia? Sophia Lauren. I was in a picture with her, you know. Well, how wonderful for you. Thank you. Uh, make yourself comfortable, Gus. <laughs> Shouldn't you two be on your way? Oh, well, the premiere doesn't start until 8 o'clock. Well, just the same. If you don't get there early, the seats get wet. <laughs> We're not sitting in the bleachers, Mrs. Angel. We're sitting in the orchestra. Uh, what instrument do you play? <laughs> really, really. Danny Thomas gave me the tickets. I was in his last film with him, you know. Oh, would you mind if I showed Miss Wells around the place, Gus? Go right ahead. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to see the outside first. They have a beautiful outdoor patois. You mean patio. 
You forget my southern accent. <laughs> Gus designed the fireplace. And Vicky designed the drink. That other one will be here any minute. We've got to get them out of here. As far as I'm concerned, you can throw them to the wolves. <laughs> oh, all right. You've got to be. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Angel. Come on in. Oh, Aunt Vicky, uh, is the wheel ready to roll? <laughs> <laughs> uh, honey, I'm afraid he isn't in the house at the moment. Man, he never likes, does he? Oh, can I wait? Well, of course, Laurie, but don't you think maybe... Oh, if... hi, Laurie. Uh... Well, hi, Uncle Gus. Oh, sweetheart, those uh, two potted plants we were looking for are on hot on the patois. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they wandered... Check the kitchen. Okay. Could you come back later, Laurie? Oh, I'm used to waiting for him. See, we got an automatic date the minute we see each other. Oh, uh, those two potted plants are out here drinking coffee. Uh, <laughs> black. <laughs> it does sound kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? I better go see what he was talking about. I think your husband's nervous. I like him, too. Oh, no. I mean, nervous, nervous. <laughs> oh. Aren't we all? <laughs> I was just telling the kids it's getting late. Oh, here, you go right ahead. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. You know, you homemakers are simply fabulous. <laughs> Don't stay out too late, kid. Uh, why this way? Why not? <laughs> Oh, back door. You know, that reminds me of the last time I worked with Lucille. We had this... Yeah, we know. The, the key will be under the mat. Goodbye, kids. Uh, on. Bye, Aunt Vicky. Uh, so long, Gus. <laughs> Gus. I don't see her. She's there. Maybe she fell on the floor. <laughs> Darling, she's just a baby. A clumsy baby. Yeah. She's way too young to think of marriage, but she's awful cute. You take that other one. Oh. Mrs. Angel, you remind me so much of Danny Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> you homemakers are simply fabulous. As I was saying to Yule Brenner, Yule, I said, I call him Yule because that's his name. Yule, I said... <laughs> My wrap. Yes, uh, her mink. Uh uh, he has to take care of some of this himself. Oh, but Gus, he's such, such a boob. If you love him, you let him work himself out of his own booby trap. <laughs> Seems the older I get, the more absent minded I become. Why, when I was younger, oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Laurie, uh, what are you doing here? Well, keeping our date. Uh, are we picking up your date on the way to uh, wherever we're going? Oh, I'm Laurie Olson. Uh, she's right. She is Olson. I mean, uh, <laughs> Miss Wells, may I present Miss Jane? Oh, boy. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Jane Wells. Uh, she's right. She's Jane. Uh, well, Miss Wells was kind enough to take me to a TV studio today. Uh, we left the three. honey, and... have you caught in laryngitis? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm sure Miss Olsen will understand that we only have a few moments for conversation. Oh, good. <laughs> I assume you two must have known each other in Mississippi. Known each other? Who are we on? I was a trip out. Oh, Daddy, let me drive a couple hundred miles. Charge, huh? And charge. <laughs> I enjoy driving, too. Of course, my car isn't exactly new. Danny drove it a few thousand miles before he sold it to my father. That's Danny Thomas, you know. I've done quite a bit of work with him. That is, when I'm not working for Bob. Bob? Hope. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to seeing him tonight at the premiere. Sounds real nervous. <laughs> Who's taking you? Oh, boy. <laughs> What's going on? He'd do anything to keep from telling Laurie he has a date with Jane. He's out there filibustering. <laughs> He's smarter than I thought he was. <laughs> the first fight my daddy had was a snapping puddle. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, little coward. The minute he stops blabbing, poor Lori's going to get it right between the eyes. I thought the whole idea was to break him up with Lori. Well, he could do a lot worse. Feminine logic, if I ever heard it. Little Miss Mean Dropper out there. She's been in one TV commercial. Wilma told me that in so many words. She's putting on the big phony act. He's beginning to run down. And so we're up this creek and lost our paddle, so Daddy said, uh, let's go home, son. And, and so uh, we went home, and uh, uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> Who's taking you? Well, Wheeler has the tickets. Oh, boy. <laughs> Are we all going together? Well, there are only two tickets, Lori. Oh, well, that's great for you and me, but what about Jane? We can't just leave. Oh, I did. Well, well, have a good time, you hear? What did he do, hit her? <laughs> She'll be all right. You just wait. You wait till he discovers they don't sell popcorn at premieres. <laughs> what I would do, Laurie, is find out who introduced it to him in the first place. He's gone, isn't he? I'll have a little talk with him in the morning. So will I, Laurie. What are they doing, going out one at a time? Stand back, Laurie. I didn't... Oh, Aunt Vicky. Boy, did that Jane blister me. Hi. Hi. What'd she say? Well, I walked outside with her, and she said she had 15 boyfriends she could call, and that Lori was a hick, and that she wasn't going to wait around all night for me to make up my mind what I was going to do. Not only that, she said I had a voice like squealing brakes. <laughs> well, Abraham Lincoln had a high voice. Yeah, only Wheeler can shift his into low. <laughs> She's back. My father. Your father? Sometimes he gets tired of waiting in the car. <laughs> you kids don't use your head. Hello, I'm sorry we didn't realize you were waiting out in the car. I'm Mrs. Angel. This is my husband. Uh, Olson's the name. How do you do, sir? Daddy, Mr. and Mrs. Angel are just wonderful. And we and I are getting married again. Uh, again? We had a little interruption. Why don't you two kids set a date? Oh, we did. June. Good. Now, what you want to do is pick out your silver pattern right away, yeah? <laughs> Mr. Olson, would you come in a minute? We'd like to talk to you if we may. Alone, sir. Sure. You kids wait for me out in the car. Come on, ugly. <laughs> A few days ago, my sister sent us a desperate letter. Well, to make a long story short, she sent Wheeler out here so he wouldn't marry Laurie. Or anybody, for that matter. Mrs. Angel's sister thinks he's too young, and so do I. Well, so do I. Well, you just said they should set the date. Look, folks. <laughs> I don't know whether it's psychology or just plain horse sense. But those two kids have been talking about getting married ever since they were 11 years old. And my wife and I encourage them, and they keep putting it off. <laughs> she said June. It's always June, but they never say what year. <laughs> you mean that's all there is to it? That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, I better let the kids drive me home so they can keep their date. Now, don't worry about a thing. I believe in long engagements, and this sure looks like a long one. <laughs> Feel better? Homemaker? <laughs> I sure do. Oh, well, no, that's all right. I'll wait. Uh, need some money? Uh, no, thanks. I just want to tell you I'll be home early. Wheeler. We were proud of you tonight. When it came right down to it, you did the right thing about the girl. Shut It wasn't only Lori. I just didn't want to disappoint her daddy. That Mr. Olson is dead set on us getting married. <laughs> Got 
Got a date with an angel, going to meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel, and I'm on my way to heaven. gentlemen, your Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk program Top Tunes and You Tell It on this same network. And the dramatic show Climax every week on another network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.